when we look at the heroic, heroic stances of our brothers and sisters in Palestine and in Gaza, many of us might feel that we would love to kiss the heads of these brothers and say to them, Jazakallah khair, shukran, thank you for these lessons, even though they're going through some terrible and difficult calamities. The lessons of sabr, of patience, of iman and yaqeen, of this iman, their faith and the yaqeen, their certainty with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the face of all of this, they have that iman. And it reminded me of a story of one of the great Sahaba, Abdullah ibn Hudhafa al-Sahmi radiallahu an, during the Khilafah of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an, when he was captured along with many of the other Sahaba and the Tabi'een as prisoners of war by the Romans. And when they realized that he was not just one of the fighters, but he was from the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they focused on him. The king of the Romans at that time, he came to him and he said, I will give you half of my wealth if you leave Islam and accept Christianity. So what was the, the reply of Abdullah ibn Hudhafa radiallahu an? He said, if you gave me all of your wealth and all the wealth of all of your kingdom, meaning all of Rome, and the wealth of all of the Arabs. He said, I wouldn't leave the religion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even if it was with a blink of an eye, for a blink of an eye. Wouldn't leave the religion of Islam. Then he said to him, in that case, I will kill you if you don't accept Christianity. He said, then that's what it's going to be. So he ordered his soldiers to tie him up on the cross, and he told them to shoot arrows around him, to scare him, and then to, to, to invite him again to Christianity. He still refused. Then they came with boiling water, and they put it in front of him, and they brought two of the prisoners from the Muslims, and they put them in this pot of boiling water. Obviously, you can imagine what that must have looked like with their bones coming up to the top. And then it came his time to be plunged into that boiling water. So as he got closer to the boiling water, he started to cry, radiallahu anhu. And when he cried, they thought, huh, now we got him. So they told the king, he said, stop the execution. And they asked him, why are you crying? Thinking maybe he changed his mind when he saw death in front of him. He said, it's because I wished that with every hair on my body, I had equal souls that would come out and the death for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the path of Allah like this. But it's only one soul, unfortunately. I'm only going to die once. I wish I could die over and over again for the sake of Allah. Hearing that, they were surprised. He said, look, if you kiss my head, out of a sign of respect, of ta'zim, showing the greatness of the king, he said, if you kiss my head, I will free you. He said, no. He said, I'll kiss your head if you free me and all of the Muslim prisoners. So he agreed to that. And then when he came back to Medina, and Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh heard this news, he said, it's the right upon every Muslim who sees Abdullah ibn Hudhafa to kiss his head. And he said, I will start by doing it. So Umar ibn Khattab kissed the head of Abdullah ibn Hudhafa radiallahu anh. And subhanAllah, when we hear these stories of the Sahaba, we automatically think that was the old Iman when they were true Muslims and they were very strong. And that might be true, but when we see similar stances of Iman and Thabat and being firm on their deen and such and a genocide that's happening now to our brothers and sisters in Gaza, but yet you see that Thabat and how firm they are in the religion. And I remember in a gathering with some brothers and we're talking about religious brothers, dedicated brothers to the religion, saying, Wallahi, I don't know if I could do that if I was to face something like that. That's this is shadeed. This is very tough what the brothers and sisters are facing. But yet they have that thabat. They're staying firm upon their religion. So what is it that they have that makes them so strong? And right away, one might say, you have to have strong iman, which is true, but that's a bit cliche. 
So how do you get to that strong iman? To, to be thabit, to be firm in the face of adversity. When the fitna comes, when the calamities come. How do you get that iman? That's what we need to focus on. And before we mention some of the tools that we need, it's important that we remind ourselves, if you want to be from the mu'minin, you truly want to be from the believers, you have to realize like what Allah said in the Quran. When you open up chapter 29, Surah Al-Ankabut, Allah sends a very clear message for us to reflect on, to ponder on. Allah said, do the people think they're going to say they believe? And when we say we believe, it's a belief that we put into action. So they think they're going to say they're going to believe and they're not going to be tested. وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ And we surely tested those before them. So it was made clear to Allah and to everyone. Made clear to Allah the ones who are the truthful and the ones who are the liars. And subhanAllah, that's from the biggest benefits of what is happening now to our brothers and sisters in Gaza and in Palestine. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us the true believers from the munafiqeen. It's become crystal clear to everyone now. There's no doubt about it now. It's become very clear. So that is the asl. When it comes to this iman that we have, the foundation, it comes to striving and struggling for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why a very powerful message at the beginning of this surah, in surah al-Ankabut, also the last verse, verse 69. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبْلَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا مَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ That those who strive for us, who strive for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who strive for His religion, strive to implement Islam in their lives, what happened to them? Allah said, He will guide us to His ways. And He said, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا مَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And indeed Allah will be with the doers of good. Alhamdulillah. So this is the foundation. That we strive and we struggle for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We strive to implement Islam in our lives. We make the most important thing our goal, our objective. How to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how to be obedient to Him. And then we add to that Al-A'mal As-Saliha. Doing as many good deeds as we can. What happens and what is the importance of these good deeds? The Prophet والسلام, told us in the hadith that was narrated by Imam Muslim. He said, Badru bil a'mali fitanan. He said, To be ready for fitness, they're going to come with good deeds. He said, It's going to come like part of a dark night. I mean, it's going to creep up on you. And that's the importance that you're ready. He said, To be prepared for these fitness when they come with what? With a'mal, with good deeds. And he gave us a description of how severe these fitness, these tests, these tribulations are going to be. He said, يُصْبِحُ رَجُلُ مُؤْمِنًا وَيُمْسِي كَافِرًا SubhanAllah. He said, a person will wake up in the morning as a believer and reach the evening as a disbeliever, as a kafir. Oh, يُمْسِي مُؤْمِنًا وَيُصْبِحُ كَافِرًا Or he will be in the evening a believer and in the morning time he will be a disbeliever. Why? What does he do? He will sell his deen for something of the dunya. That's why when we strive for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to implement the deen, when fitna and, tri and, and, and tribulations and tests come, inshallah ta'ala will be firm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ فَإِذْ فَعَلُوا مَا يُعَضُونَ بِهِ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ وَأَشَدَّ تَثْبِيتًا That if they were to do what they were instructed to do, it would be better for them and it would keep them firm. It would keep them firm when they do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded them to do. After we establish the foundation of striving and struggling for Allah, doing as many good deeds as we can, then we need our other weapons to keep us firm. And for the most important of these weapons, the Quran, the dhikr, and the dua. When we look into the Quran, 
We know the Quran is a book of barakah, of blessings. But one of the key objectives of why the Quran was sent down, as Allah told us in Surah Al Furqan, verse 32, and we sent it down like this so it would keep your heart firm. Allah told us, قُلْ نَزَّلَهُ رُوحُ الْقُدُسِ مِنْ رَبِّكَ بِالْحَقِّ In Surah Al-Nahd, verse 102. When Allah said, say that the Holy Spirit brought it down from your Rabb, from your Lord, with truth. Why? What is the objective of it being sent down from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? لِيُثَبِّتِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَهُدًا وَبُشْرًا لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ To keep those who believe firm and a source of huda, guidance, and glad tidings, Bushra for the Muslims. This is why the Quran was sent down. When we read in the Quran, the stories of the Quran, the stories of the Prophet, what did Allah tell us about it? Allah said, and we tell you the stories of all of the Prophets, their news, why? To keep your heart firm. These are the key, this is one of the key objectives of the Quran. That's why the Prophet والسلام, he said, He said, I left behind that which you hold firm to, you'll never go astray after me. He said, The book of Allah, the Quran. And then the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we talk about the dhikr of Allah, we often think about the spiritual side we get. Which is correct. No doubt about that, that the hearts will find assurance through the dhikr of Allah. But there's something even greater than that. Allah told us in Surah Al-Anfal, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, idha laqeetum fiyatan fathbutu, wadhkur Allah kathiran, la'allakum tuflihun. Oh, you have believed, if you were to meet a group, meaning of the enemy forces, fathbutu, stay firm. Stay firm in what? And remember Allah with much remembrance. Perhaps you will be successful. That's why the dhikr is one of our key tools in staying firm upon the truth. At the time of adversity, the time of difficulty. And like that, the dua as well. The dua, it's a precaution, a preparation. رَبَّنَا لَا تَزِيُّ قُلُوبُنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتِنَا Oh Allah, do not let our hearts go astray after you've guided us. And the most dua that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make, Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Oh Allah, the control of the hearts, make my heart firm upon your religion. And once we use that as a precaution, we constantly beg Allah and seek his assistance and beg him and ask him to keep us firm upon our religion when the calamity strikes, when the troubles hit, we have the strength and the ability to, to say, رَبَّنَا أَفْرِغْ عَلَيْنَا صَبَرًا وَثَبِّتْ أَقْدَامَنَا وَانْصُرْ عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ We have the strength to do what our brothers are doing right now in front of our eyes when they're saying, Oh Allah, to pour down sabr, patience upon us and to keep our feet firm and to make us victorious against the disbelievers. And from the key tools to keep us firm upon our deen at the time of calamities and difficulties so we can be something like our brothers and sisters and we see in front of us now what's happening in Palestine, subhanAllah. To have that certainty, that yaqeen, is to strengthen our iman in the qadr, in Allah's decree. قُلْ لَيْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا Say, nothing will happen to us except for what Allah has decreed for us. He is our mawla. He is our supporter. He is the one who gives assistance. And upon Allah, the true believers make tawakkul, they rely. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, it's very important that we realize that these tools that I mentioned in the first khutbah, they only really work properly if we implement them during the time of rakha, during the time of ease. And we do tarbiyah, we train ourselves 
to become accustomed that this is who we are. We strive for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to establish his religion within ourselves and upon the earth. We strive to do as much good as we can. We're constantly reading the Quran. We're constantly making dua and making dhikr. It becomes part of who we are. If we do that during the time of rakha, during the time of ease, when the time of shidda, the time of difficulty, the time of fitna, turbulence and calamities, the time of imtihanat, of being tested, or mihin, of being tested, when these times come, you're ready to be prepared to be able to withstand it. And that's why you'll find the brothers that we have, the soldiers, why do they train? Because if something does happen, they have to be prepared. Why is a martial artist always training? To be prepared. When you have to, you do have to use it, at least you know how to do it. Your iman as well. You have to train that iman to be prepared. But when it comes, boom, you're ready. But if you want to try to put it into action at the time of the calamities, yeah, it doesn't really work. It might work eventually, but you might go through a lot of difficulty. Where it would have been much easier for you from the beginning if you put it into action from the beginning, you trained. And that's why one of the key things to stay firm as well is to make sure you're in a good environment with good brothers around you, with good sisters around you for our sisters, with people who are like-minded and their goals and their objective, which is to stay firm upon their religion in this life and be successful in this life and in the hereafter. Those like-minded individuals with us, that we stay, that we keep them around, around us. And that's why Allah told us, and the verse that probably all, all of you have already read today in Surah Al-Kahf. Wasbir nafsika. With who? Ha, be patient with who? Wasbir nafsika ma'al ladhina yad'oona rabbuhum il-ghadati wal-ashi yuriduna wajha. Allah said to be patient. Keep yourself patient with those who are making dua to Allah night and day. They want to be successful. They want Allah to be pleased with them. Wala ta'adu aynaka anhum. Allah said, don't let them go far away from you. You need to have, keep your brothers close to you. Because if they're strong, you're strong. And if they're weak, you're going to be weak. And that's why the Prophet, alayhi salatu was salam, he said, Ar-rajalu ala dini khalilihi fal yanzur ahadukum man yukhalid. That the man is on the religion. Pay attention to the wording of the hadith. He didn't say he's influenced. He said he's ala deen, on the religion. That's how much he's influenced. He's on the religion of his friend. So be very careful about those who you befriend. If they're strong, you'll stay strong. If they're weak, you're going to become weak. My dear brothers and sisters, what is happening to our brothers and sisters in, in Palestine is a great calamity. Not just for them, but for the entire ummah. Even us, we can't enjoy our lives. We, we go through difficulty. Many of us are brought to tears you know, day in and day out when we see what's happening. But at the same time, there's many valuable lessons that Allah is giving us, those who are outside of Palestine as Muslims, to reflect on. And from that is to prepare ourselves to be strong in our Iman. Because if calamity strikes and realize and know very well that calamity, test, difficulties, it hits everyone. It might hit you in an individual way and each person's test might be different. And it might hit us as a group where we're in, uh, an entire country goes through an affliction. May Allah protect us. But the reality is that we're going to be tested as Allah told us in the beginning of Surah Al-Ankabut. Therefore, we have to prepare ourselves so we're ready so when it, when it comes, we're able to withstand it and turn it into a blessing for us into Ajr inshallah ta'ala. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult to deal with those calamities and those tests when they come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.